Okay, guys, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is for you in your part of the world. Our, our one minute uh, allowance for stragglers is up. So let's begin to talk about uh, character standings and what they mean to you here in the game. Uh, I apologize if I'm not up on the, the most current events here in the, in the EVE Union. I've been out of the game for the last couple of weeks dealing with crises, so this is really my first uh, my first uh, time back. I've been playing with the training queue lately, and I have to say, what an awesome uh, piece of innovation. All of those little four-hour skills that I don't have time for can be taken care of. Um, so anyway, on to, uh, on to the uh, classroom. If uh, anybody would care to pose a question in text chat, that would be useful. As we get towards the end of the class, I will open up the microphone so that we can have some, uh, some uh, free speech going back and forth. I will also try to remember to repeat any questions that I see in the text chat. I do know that uh, one or two of you are recording this, and uh, hopefully you'll edit out my hemming and my hawing and my pausing as we uh, go through before you uh, before you post those. So this this class is set up as kind of a preface for the next two classes that are scheduled uh, next week and the week after. If uh, if you came here expecting to uh, learn about the Cosmos missions or the data center missions, uh, please accept my apologies uh, for having missed this particular class last week uh, twice. It, I, I feel that this is a better class to uh, have attended before learning about Cosmos and uh, data center missions. Uh, we'll, uh, we will track, we will do those next week and the week after. And if anybody likes to repeat classes, we'll be back onto a regular schedule starting in April. So, what are character standings? Character standings, or standings in general, are. Is, is are a number that defines your relationship to other entities within the game and defines their relationship to you within the game. So, for example, uh, for example, you work for an agent. That agent holds you with a certain level of regard and a certain level of esteem, and that's expressed as a number from negative 10 to positive 10. Where, whereby the, the higher the positive value, the more that that particular agent likes you. Aside from agents, the corporation that that agent works for has standings towards you, and the faction that that uh, corporation belongs to has standings uh, towards you. Anything under zero is considered a negative standing, and when we do some hands-on, you'll, you'll see some descriptions of those. Uh, negative standing means that they don't hold you in very high regard, and in fact, they don't like you. And the closer you get towards the negative 10, the more disappointed they are with you. On the other hand, the higher your positive standings are, the higher regard that you're held uh, to with that corporation or that faction or that agent. Aside from factions and agents and corporations, that are all uh, non-player character entities. Factions can also be set between characters and between uh, character corporations. And we'll go through how to do that. Uh, we'll go through how to, to do that shortly. So, what, what valid use are there for standings in in Eve? If the mechanic exists, there must be a good reason standing behind it. And uh, most of us, if, uh, if we're new, newer characters, what we're most interested in doing is running missions. Based on your standings, an agent will or will not talk to you. If you've been in the game for a couple of weeks and you've seen the uni chats about running level four missions and making millions and millions and millions of ifs, uh, you may have tried to talk to a, to a level four agent so that you can get on, get in on some of that action only to be told, uh, that uh, you, you have to go away. They don't want to talk to you. Well, every every agent in the game has a certain uh, level and a certain quality assigned to that agent, and based on what your standings are with that agent, his or her corporation, 
and or that corporation's faction, the agent will permit you to work for him or not. Standings also affect the we take rate for refining or reprocessing in any of the NPC stations. That is uh, essentially a, a, a tax. It's not called a tax, it's, uh, uh, but it is based on, uh, based on uh, your character standings. If uh, you eventually get into wanting to run a player-owned station in high sex space, you'll know, require a certain amount of standings in order to be permitted to to uh, to deploy that structure. Um, if your standings are low, below a certain level, uh, you, you're also at risk of being shot by the other factions' navy. Uh, including any any Navy vessels they may have floating around gates, uh, those gates guns and uh, or, and the uh, and the uh, station guns. If you get interested in faction warfare, your standings will have to be at a certain level in order to participate. Uh, standings can also be used to help uh, help set up your overview a little bit. If there are people that you know that you want to avoid, you can highlight them in your overview based on the standings that you set towards them. Likewise, you can highlight the, the people based on positive standings that you set towards them. Okay, and we'll, I'll go through all of those items again in a little bit more detail. For the time being, let's do a little bit of uh, hands-on training. Let's uh, figure out how to look up uh, your current standings. If everyone will go to their character sheet and, and open it up, along the left side you will see the tab for standings. Please do that now. Now, if you've never opened up this page before, you'll see that there are uh, four tabs on the main pane for likes, dislikes, liked by, and disliked by. If you take a look at the likes tab, uh, most of you probably have nothing listed in there. This page would actually reflect uh, people that you assign standings to uh, in high regard. For example, if, uh, if you went to the People and Places button on your Neocom and were to look up a person, a corp member, a favorite uh, E-Uni instructor, uh, in the people and places, you would be able to right-click that name after searching and uh, set standings. I'll, I'll, I'll wait a moment if, uh, if everyone would please open up people and places. Under search, go ahead and uh, select character and enter any search string. Uh, something reasonable will probably come up given all of the different names, or you can pick uh, anybody else that's in the class. Now, upon uh, upon uh, upon hitting search, you should have a small window come up with uh, the names of one or more persons. Uh, feel free to right-click on any one of those that you want to, and uh, near the bottom of the pop-up menu, you will see a set standings option. Go ahead and select it. Now, here you can see the slider will allow you to set uh, standings, positive or negative, for that person. Now, uh, feel free to do that if you want to. The uh, text box for the reason for the standing change is not something that the other person uh, uh, will see, so you can, uh, you can uh, put any reason you want in there. I'll give you all a few seconds to close all of these. We'll go back to the character sheet. Now, if you actually did participate in that exercise, you should now see the person that you assigned uh, positive standings to. Uh, under the characters category in uh, in this page, likewise you can assign standings to uh, to uh, player corporation. Um, now, as we go across the tabs, similarly we'll see the dislikes uh, page, which uh, for me is currently completely empty. That works similarly to the likes page. Now let's click onto the third tab for the liked by category. Now, for running missions and for doing anything else that you need uh, uh, faction standing or corporation standing or even agent standings for, this will be an important screen for you. 
because we're all in Eve uh, University and most of us are in the Forge, I will uh, I will talk about uh, uh, Calvary State as our faction of interest. However, if you're uh, if you're a Minmatar or a Mar or uh, or one of those uh, uh, Galentes, then uh, Obviously, the, the example won't work as well for you unless you just happen to be running missions uh, for any of the Calgary State uh, corporations. Now, at this point, let me kind of uh, go over the hierarchy here a little bit. As as mission runners, we find agents that we want to work for that give us missions that uh, allow us to uh, reap some rewards. Now, every one of those agents work for a corporation. So, so for example, if, uh, if you run missions for, uh, for uh, uh, agents that only then uh, you'll accrue standings for Calvary Navy. Now, many, many corporations all belong to uh, multiple fact factions. So, for example, here in the Forge region where most of us are, you'll see that the vast majority of the corporations belong to the Caldari State faction. In fact, if uh, if your race is Caldari, that's uh, that's your main faction as a, as a uh, as Caldari. Uh, now, there are many factions in in uh, in the game. I'm really not sure how many there are, uh, but but we can count them later. I'll uh, post a link. Now, I'm not sure uh, what missions everyone has run for, what their faction standings are for, so I'll let you, uh, I'll let you pick any example. Uh, I'm going to click on my Calvary State here, listed under the Factions subheading in the, in the Liked By page. And if I right-click that, I can uh, go to the Show Transactions button. The Show Transactions uh, menu. What should pop up is a list of, uh, of uh, missions you may have done that influenced uh, your, your standings with Calvary State um, and or derived standings, which I'll uh, capture a little bit, I'll detail a little bit. Right now, I just kind of want to show you the mechanic for being able to look at the, uh, at the history behind the standings for, your, for whatever faction you happen to have chosen. Likewise, you can right-click and look at that same history for any one of the corporations that are showing that you have standings with, uh, as well as any of the agents. Okay, now assuming that you find an agent that you like to work for, what good what good do corporation standings and what good do uh, uh, faction standings? Well, eventually you're going to outgrow the agent that you're working for. If you're still newish in the game, chances are you're running uh, level one or two missions. You may be as high as level three missions. Um, some of you may have uh, progressed to level four missions. Hopefully you're not losing battleships uh, every time you go out. Now, if you get bored with that, that agent, the missions become repetitive, or you want to move to a higher level agent, you, you have to find an agent that will uh, that will talk to you. That will be based on that agent's corporation standing to you. At some point, you may want to begin running missions for another corporation. The standings that are required to work for another corporation will come from the faction standings. The practical aspect is if your faction standings are high enough, you can work for any agent and any corporation that belongs to that faction. So, for example, if your standings were at a perfect plus 10, you literally could work for any agent or any corporation that, uh, that falls under the Calvary State. There is a caveat to that, though. If uh, for some reason you upset one of the agents enough or one particular corporation enough such that your standing falls below negative two, then uh, they won't speak to you, period, uh, regardless of what your uh, faction standing is. In fact, that goes for any agent in any corporation. If any one of those three standings is below negative two, that agent will refuse to talk to you. The, the the downside to that is 
Uh, and now here we're going to move to the fourth page of the uh, standings screen on the character sheet. And on, on this page you can see factions and corporations and if applicable agents that have uh, set their standings towards you as negative. For example, because I run Kaldari missions and the Kaldaris are enemies of the Galenti, the uh, Galentis hold me in uh, low regard. Right now I'm negative 1.35 to the Galenti. So in theory, I could still run missions for corporation or uh, or uh, an agent that belonged to the Galenti Federation. Very shortly, I'll, I'll, I'll describe that relationship and why I have negative Galenti standings. But this is this. Uh, this is why I'll never be able to run missions for the Blood Rigger Covenant, for example. I, I don't believe they run missions, but uh, uh, if they did offer missions, my negative 3.21 standings would completely preclude me from running anything. Uh, any uh, any questions in, in text chat about uh, standings and just having agents uh, being able to talk to you? Okay, and, and no questions about the mechanics of looking up standings and or setting standings to uh, player characters and player corporations. If not, we're done with the character sheet. We can uh, close that and move it out of the way. Now, uh, I also mentioned that uh, based on, oops, okay, the, the, question, uh, the question in, uh, in, uh, in chat is, does character standings Override corporation standings. Now, I'm not really sure of, of the exact question. If uh, by character standings, do you mean the uh, the standings of the agent? Uh, he asks if he sets someone to negative three. His corporation is uh, set to negative ten by the uni. Then your standings should override those. For example, on the default uh, overview settings, any any corporation uh, that EUNI sets to negative 10 will show up uh, highlighted. I believe it's uh, red or uh, or dark orange to indicate that uh, this is a, uh, a known adversary of the, of the UNI. Um, however, you can you should be able to override those with uh, with your own standings. Thank you. We have somebody checking to verify that for us. Okay. While we while we await an answer for that, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll point out again that uh, your standings, uh, or that is the standings that an NPC corporation assigns to you, uh, affects the amount of uh, of uh, materials that they take anytime you refine or reprocess. Uh, um, a lot of people talk about perfect refining and perfect reprocessing, but that will really never happen until you get some amount of standings with the station that's doing the refining and reprocessing for you. Uh, as you get more industrialized and decide that you want either a, a station in space uh, to camp at or to perform industry at, uh, you'll find that you need standings with a faction in order to set up a POS in their space. And it's a very simple formula. If you want to set up a POS in, uh, in for example, uh, 0.2 low sec space, you need a 2.0 or better standing with uh, that space's faction. Uh, if you want to set up in 0.3 space, then you need a 3.0 or better faction, and so on up through uh, 0.7 space. Uh, no player owned structures are allowed in, uh, in uh, space with a higher security status than that. So if you found an available moon in Corsiki, which is a 0.7 space, you would find that you would need to have a 7.0 or higher standing with, uh, with Caldera State. Thank you. We do have uh, confirmation that the standings that you set to a player or to a corporation overrides the standings that your corporation has set to that other player or that other corporation. 
again, yes, unless you set them to neutral. Neutral is, uh, is uh, uh, a non-standing. Now, if you recall some of the negative, uh, some of the negative standings that you saw in, uh, in the character sheet. Okay, we, there's uh, some discussion going on in chat regarding uh, who overrides what. Uh, I will say that I have not played with it enough to, uh, to know the exact mechanic. People that I've personally set to negative uh, do show up for me. People that the uni feels uh, should be set to negative do show up for me. Um, I think uh, I think I don't really have any conflicts personally with that. I will uh, play with that mechanic and try to be prepared with that answer next time we repeat this class, and I can uh, post the notes and uh, the thread that announces this class. Um, so again, looking at uh, some of the some of the factions that have uh, negative standings towards you. Uh, beware of any that uh, fall below negative five. Once you are in that faction's space or near a uh, near a station that is owned by a corporation that is at negative five or below, they are prone to shoot you on sight. Uh, Aisha asks if it's possible to run missions for both Calberry and Galenti without negatively affecting each other's standings. Uh, in a little bit, I'll post a link and describe how factions uh, interact and how the standings interact. But the uh, the, the 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 answer is no. If uh, you do something that gains a standing with one faction, the other faction will automatically decrease you. However, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. If you are very careful about uh, uh, balancing the number of missions and the type of missions that uh, each of the factions give you, you can come away with, uh, with positive uh, standings to both of them. Uh, additionally, faction standings will be very important to you if you ever decide to partake in faction warfare. To be considered as part of the faction for faction warfare purposes, uh, you personally must have above a, a 0.5 uh, faction standings, or if you're in a corporation that's dedicated to faction warfare, the corporation standings have to be below, above 0.5. Now, because corporation standings are, are derived based on everyone that's a member of that corporation, um, if you have a sufficiently low standing such that it would drag their average below the plus 0.5, they may not want to, they may not allow you to join their corp, that is, once you uh, leave the uni. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll point out again, uh, based on the discussion that's going on in the, in the text chat, that uh, you can set up your overview settings to reflect the standings that, that you uh, assign to other uh, players and other corporations. Uh, and that topic should be discussed in the uh, in the overview class. Okay, I'm going to go away from the mic for just a minute so I can post a link into the text channel. Okay, if uh, if everyone would care to open that up, uh, this shows us how uh, how the factions in the universe view each other in the first table, and the second table describes the standings uh, interactions. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, a as an example, we'll start in the top left. We can see that uh, the Amar Empire in, uh, in the first row uh, naturally uh, likes itself very much, so we can see that uh, the first column is the Amar Empire. The, 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 it's not a true faction. You can't set standings to yourself, uh, but virtually, uh, virtually they see themselves in the very, very highest regard. Now, of course, the Amar are, uh, are good friends with, uh, with the other factions that are listed in black, such as the uh, Amatar Mandate, Kaldari State, because the Amar and the Kaldari are, uh, are allies. Uh, the Amar are positive with, uh, with the uh, Kenan Kingdom, with Mordu's Legion, and uh, with the Interbus. These are all uh, positive relationships. 
at the same time, because the Amar and uh, the uh, uh, Caldari are enemies with uh, with uh, the Galente, that we have uh, uh, assigned a, a, a negative two standings towards them. The Garistas pilots pirates are assigned a negative seven. But now, what does all of this mean? This this so far just describes what one faction feels towards the other faction. If you scroll down to the next table, we're going to see something called derived interfaction standing modifier. Now, as was as was hinted about, as was discussed in in the text chat, uh, anytime you run, anytime you gain standings with one faction, you automatically lose standings with the other faction. Now, the degree of severity is described in this table in the same percentages that are offered as uh, standings increases anytime you successfully complete a mission, for example. So if uh, if we look at the Amar Empire, and, uh, well, let's uh, let's look at the uh, fourth line down, Caldari State. We can see that Caldari State is set as, as uh, uh, negative 5% to the Galente Federation. Anytime you, anytime you gain standings, with Caldari State, your Galente Federation standings will go down 5% of the increase that uh, that you got with uh, Caldari State. Okay, the, uh, the, 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 the question in, uh, in uh, chat is what, uh, what, I, what I did to do Caldari missions and raise Caldari faction standing was join E Emissions Channel. Get some Caldari Navy Corp standing to possible being Galente missions, then ran missions for Caldari since my Caldari faction was still above negative two. Yes, I, 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 I see that. I felt it was better to uh, read that than uh, interject a long, awkward silence into the uh, mic. Okay, now Nicholas asks, how does running, for example, a level four mission with someone else affect your standings? Now that uh, that depends on uh, on whether the person that accepted the mission turns in the mission for just himself or turns in the mission for the entire gang or the entire fleet. If he turns in the mission for the entire fleet, then the standings are divided evenly amongst uh, all of the fleet members. That is, if the mission would normally reward a five percent standings increase. Uh, and there were five fleet members, every fleet member would, uh, in fact, only receive a 1% standings boost. Uh, beware that that does not apply for storyline missions. In the case of storyline missions, only the person that accepted the mission receives the uh, standings uh, increase. I'll talk about storyline missions uh, in just a little bit with, uh, in, in, uh, in more detail. Um, so back to the derived, back to the derived standings. Uh, the, the, the key lesson is if any time, any time you gain standings for whatever reason with, uh, with one faction, you'll automatically lose standings with the other faction. But the degree of severity is, uh, is, uh, is different depending on the, on the relationship between the factions. On the plus side, any time you gain standings with, uh, with, uh, with one faction, you'll automatically increase your faction standings with another faction based on their relationship. So, for example, let's imagine that you have uh, a negative 2.1 standings with the Galente, but you only have negative 1.8 standings with, uh, with the Minmatar. With, uh, now, recall, below, below a negative 2, you cannot run miss, you cannot run missions for that uh, for that faction. However, uh, because you have greater than negative two with with the Minmatar in this case, you can run uh, you can run enough missions to eventually receive a storyline mission with the Minmatar that will provide Minmatar uh, faction standings increase with a slightly smaller derived standings increase going to the to the uh, Galente Federation. Eventually, you'll be able to increase your standings with the Galente so that you're above the negative two. Now, as a side, now how uh, now now given all that, how can you decrease your faction standings? 
again based on the on the derived uh, on the derived uh, standings based on the relationships. You'll 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 decrease your standings every time you increase standings. Uh, another way to lose faction stand standings is to destroy that faction's ships. This uh, this has bearing on uh, on missions, particularly storyline missions that you run. For example, in uh, many of the uh, Caldari missions, you'll be asked to destroy Galenti ships. Even if it's uh, not a storyline mission, even if it's not a mission that will increase your faction standings, the pure fact that you're destroying Galenti ships will uh, will lower your standings with the Galenti. Uh, a lot of people that are worried that are worried about their uh, negative standings or have negative standings that are on the verge of falling falling below negative two for being able to access that uh, that that faction's agents or worried about falling below negative five so that you can travel uh, in relative safety through their space will avoid any of the missions that, uh, that uh, destroy the opposing faction ships. Um, given, given that, uh, that uh, that's how to decrease standings, now the, the fun stuff, how do we increase, uh, how do we increase standings? The, uh, the number one way that uh, we all increase standings typically on a day-to-day -day basis is running, uh, running missions. Anytime you run a mission with a particular agent, you always increase your standings with that particular agent, assuming that you turn in the uh, mission successfully. Recall that if you fail a mission, you lose standings with that agent, and it's typically... Uh, two to three times as much as the standings gain would have been. Uh, if you're not confident about a mission, there is real danger in, in, uh, in, in not completing the mission. You'll, you'll suffer the, uh, the standings hits. Um, you can, uh, as you run missions with, with that agent, you're also increasing your standings with that agent's corporation. That opens up the rest of the corporation for you to go and uh, and run missions with either higher level, higher quality agents, um, or just in another part of space. Now, for regular missioning, you do not receive a faction standings increase. Although, as discussed, you can suffer a decrease when you attack the other uh, faction ships during 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 a mission. So. How do you increase your faction standings? Well, every time you have run 16 missions of the same level for the same faction, you will be offered what is called a storyline mission. These are missions that come to you uh, from an agent in your EVE mail uh, asking you to please go to a certain location uh, for a mission of vital importance. These are the types of missions upon successful completion will grant you increased standings with the faction. There are other types of storyline missions as well. There are the uh, Cosmos missions, and there are the data center missions. I, as we get uh, near the end of class, I'll uh, let you ask questions about those. I don't want to go into too many details in this class because they, uh, they're each the subject of the uh, two subsequent classes. Another means of increasing agent and corporation standings is missioning, missioning in a fleet. Uh, as I was, was asked about earlier, if you turn in a, uh, a, a, a mission as uh, for the fleet, then just like the material rewards, just like the ISK, uh, the, uh, the, um, the standings increase is divided amongst all of the members that are in the fleet at the time that the mission is turned in. But again, that does not apply to uh, another means of increasing your agent and your corporation standings. Uh, another means of increasing your agent and corporation standings is uh, to increase the speed that you acquire the standings. And there are certain skills. Uh, I'm going to pause. Okay, can uh, I get a couple of uh, five by fives if I'm not breaking up? Okay, thank you. Um, now, agent agent quality is primarily what uh, what increases your material rewards. 
however, given certain skills, you can increase the speed at which you inquire standings. So if, uh, if uh, you learn the social skills, that is actually the social skill, uh, for every level of social that you learn, that you have learned, your standings gain from each mission that you successfully complete will be higher than it ordinarily would have been. That is uh, one-tenth of a percent per uh, level, I believe. I need to double-check that. Uh, okay, I apologize. That is uh, 5% per level. So a, a simple example is if, uh, if you're running a level one mission and that mission would typically increase uh, your standings by 1% with uh, social level one, you would increase your standings by 1.05%. If you train social all the way up to level five, that 1% becomes one and a quarter percent. Now, 1% mission rewards are typically for lower level missions. Uh, imagine though that you do a data center mission which may reward you with a 6% increase. That uh, extra 25% uh, really becomes, uh, becomes a positive booster for you. Now, there are a couple of ways to increase your standings without having to run missions, without having to, uh, to learn social all the way to level five so that you can get a fractional increase. And those are the connection skill and the diplomacy skill. They both work similar to each other, but the connections uh, increases your standings to corporations or to, uh, to, corp to, to agents, to corporations, and to factions that you already have a positive relationship with. Diplomacy increases your, your standings for corporations and for factions that you are negative with. If uh, you have neutral standings, which is essentially the same as having no standings at all, then there is, uh, there's no increase from, from either one of those skills. Uh, yes, as, as, uh, Flay asks in the, in the text chat, is standing increase percent based on current standing or difference between current standing and maximum standing? The answer is the, the latter part of that. It's based on the difference between your current standing and the maximum standing. So, for example, a 5% increase uh, to your standing is not 5% not of the raw number that you can see. If you have a standing of, uh, if you currently have a standing of 1.0 to a corporation and you get a 5% increase, your new standing is not 1.05. Your new standing is based on the difference between your current standing and the maximum standing, which is uh, positive 10. That means that, uh, that e even an attractive number like 5% is really only an incremental change. It also means that the higher your standings uh, already are, the slower that raw number goes up. It's, uh, it's relatively easy, for example, to go from a 0.0, .0 standings with uh, with a corporation or a faction to a uh, to a 1.0 standing with uh, with uh, with that corporation or faction. On the other hand, if you're already at 9.0 to that faction, getting up to 10 is is uh, very very difficult. Now, uh, it was proven last time that, uh, last time I gave this class, that there are in fact uh, uh, characters out there that have perfect standings with one or more corporations, a perfect, uh, a perfect 10, and uh, that the only way that could have happened is with a heck of a lot more mission running than I would want to do. Uh, I'm reading the next question in chat. Okay, I think uh, if, I, if I'm understanding the question, you will have an increase of four or five percent. Could you rephrase that? I'll uh, I'll open the mic. We're at the end of most of the content. If uh, if you have a mic, uh, Mulger, uh, feel free to uh, feel free to ask. 
Uh, well, with, with that, we are at the end of the uh, the content portion of the class. If uh, if anybody has comments, questions, or can ask remarks, me? I can hear you, Lima Charlie. Go ahead. Okay, uh, my question was uh, basically uh, if you can have mm, the max uh, ten with the corporation, and uh, I don't know, you already have like uh, six standing with uh, with that corporation. That means that uh, the um, the social skill will basically give you an increase of uh, four slash five uh, plus, plus the standard uh, already the standard uh, standing that the mission will uh, have gave without the social skill. Okay, let, let, let me uh, think about that for a second, and hopefully, hopefully we're not mixing uh, up two subjects. Um, if you have a maximum of 10 with, uh, with any corporation, again, th these are earned standings that we're talking about with, uh, with uh, non-employer corporations. Uh, 10 is the absolute max. Now, assuming you already have uh, standings of 6 with that corporation, and we, we talk about the uh, social skill at a uh, level of four or five, you, uh, you will, uh, you will still receive a standings bonus based on your social skill. Um, but remember that getting from six to ten is a lot more difficult than getting from, from zero to six. I somehow feel that I missed part of the intent of your question though. Or, or did I cover the question completely? It's okay, me. Okay. Well, there, there's no, okay, the, the, the question in chat is, how large is the difference of standing increases between level one missions and level four missions? Uh, there's, there's no real fixed formula. The, uh, the level one, uh, the level one mission standings can be as low as four tenths of a percent and sometimes, sometimes as high as two percent. Uh, in fact, let, let me pull up uh, one of my random agents and I can give you a, uh, I can give you a good idea of what the spread is. Okay, so for, for a typical, for a typical level one mission here, I have a 0.4355% vaccines boost. Um, on the other hand, for a, uh, for a data center dog tag mission here, level two mi mission, I have a, uh, 4.8% faction boost. Uh, again, that was a storyline mission. Storyline missions typically have, uh, larger boosts to your standings than, uh, than the common missions that you run. Uh, but again, it's not, it's not just the level that makes a difference between whether you get a low uh, uh, standings increase or a high standings increase, but as well the agent quality, the uh, a, 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 a quality zero agent will almost never give the same standings increases as a uh, quality 20 agent. Uh, the question in, in chat is, is there a way to see how a mission will boost your standing before or while accepting it, uh, there is not a means that I know of that uh, that uh, will tell you that for the standard missions, for the Cosmos missions, and for the data center missions, uh, I can uh, I can look up a couple of links. Uh, they do describe exactly uh, what your standings boost will be without. Uh, without taking into account your extra skills, such as your social skill. Go ahead, Flay. Uh, yes, I, um, I think, well, the way I understand it works is uh, to avoid standings decrease, you have to make sure you don't refuse a, um, uh, two missions in a row within four hours with the same agent. Um, but I've been told that even if you refuse just one mission, uh, it'll give you a small decrease with that agent. Um, is that how it works or not? Uh, I don't believe that's how it works. And in fact, I've, I've never seen a negative. Uh, I've never seen a negative entry in my agent log for uh, for refusing a mission. 
Well, I can test that right now. I have uh, I have a mission available in this station. If uh, if you permit me, I'll uh, I'll uh, request a mission and immediately turn it down. And another question, um, this time pertaining to faction storyline missions. I've been told that by someone that if you let faction storyline missions run out without accepting them, you will not get a faction decrease contrary to uh, normal missions. Uh, do you know if that's true also or not? Uh, yes, that is true. Typically, when uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cover both of these at the same time. I am not going to perform the test because uh, I forgot that... Uh, the agent screen is different, and I don't feel like learning how to use it right now uh, to, to, to test the negative theory, um, which was just to, to make everybody happy. In, in fact, if you turn down a, a, an agent mission, you do not suffer a, uh, a standing hit. If you turn down a second mission from that same agent within four hours, you will suffer a standing hit. If you don't like the second mission, you can wait out the clock for four hours and then decline the mission, and uh, you will not take a standing hit. Likewise, if uh, dealing with a standard agent, if you ask for a mission but do not accept it and also do not reject it before the mission expires, you will take a standing hit. Now, 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 uh, Flay's question is: Does that also perter- pertain to storyline missions? That is, if you are offered a storyline mission and you do not go talk to that agent and you do not accept that mission uh, and that mission expires, in that case, you will not suffer a uh, hit for not, for, for, re- for not rejecting and uh, not accepting the mission. Give me one question. I was wondering if you have any idea what the uh, standing changes are for the new Epic Arc missions. Uh, I have no idea. I have not investigated it. I have, uh, in in fact, uh, this is my first time in game other than changing a skill since the expansion came out. Uh, now, Frank asks in chat if it's correct in thinking that a particular agent uh, reserves certain missions until you have a uh, certain standing with them. That is, the agent will talk to you and give you missions if, for example, you have a, a, a 2.0 standing, but will he hold back certain missions until you have a 4.0 standing? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. I've never... I've never heard that uh, suggested. I don't believe that that's the case. I think that uh, once that agent will work with you, he'll just select uh, random missions from from the same pool as he uh, always will. In in fact, if uh, when I'm uh, when I'm trying to slug out missions for the specific purpose of of uh, of getting uh, standings with a particular corporation for, for tax and marketing reasons, uh, I find that despite how high my standings get, I, I keep getting, I continue to get offered the same uh, boring missions over and over and over again. Yeah, okay, in chat, uh, Zolas is pointing out that the epic missions increase the corporation standings, but not the faction standings. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure what an epic mission is, but uh, I'll put it on record that uh, that's how it looks like it works. Yeah, has uh, anyone here begun one of the epic mission arcs? Okay, uh, Ariba asks, uh, how do you get to the Cosmos or Data Center missions? I'm going to go away from the mic for about 15 seconds so I can pull up those links and post them. Okay, this uh, this first link uh, goes to a, an Eve Wiki page describing uh, where the data center agents are located, as well as what the rewards are and what the requirements are. Uh, we will uh, talk in a lot more detail about that next week. Uh, for the time being, you can consider uh, you can consider that first link uh, as uh, homework in case you want to get a head start or in case you want to dive right into it. Uh, the second link describes uh, some of the Cosmos missions. In this case, it's uh, specific to running Cosmos missions in Caldari space. 
Cosmos missions are, they can be fun. They're very intensive, and uh, but the, the rewards can be great, especially as you get to the higher level missions. And we'll go into quite a bit more detail on those in two weeks' time. In the meantime, feel free to uh, to do some investigation. If you have general questions about either of those, I can uh, I can uh, I can uh, answer them now. Are there level one Cosmos and data center missions, or do you have to have a much higher battle level, like much tougher ships, before you go out and do those missions? The the data center missions you can essentially do in a shuttle. However, uh, having a capable fighting ship is valuable in case you determine that you need to increase your standings just a little bit in order to get to that next level of uh, next lo- level of agent. You don't want to you don't want to jump uh, 40 jumps in a shuttle and find out that to get to the uh, level 2 agent, you need to increase your standings by a tenth of a percent and have, have no means of doing it. The data center missions essentially are trade-in dog tags that you've collected uh, in exchange for a small monetary reward and a huge, uh, a relatively huge faction increase. There is uh, no combat unless you choose to go out and look for all of the tags. Most of the people that run the data center missions are doing it specifically for the quick standings increase, and uh, the tags are commonly purchased from uh, from the market or from the contracts. Now, when it comes to the Cosmos missions, Cosmos missions, d- depending on where you have to acquire the goods, uh, different ships will come in handy. Some of the Cosmos missions involve moving a large amount of material, a larger than normal amount of material, uh, on a courier mission unless you want to hop uh, uh, two jumps 40 times in a, in a, in a frigate. It's valuable to have a, an industrial or larger around um, because the Cosmos missions involve gathering uh, very specific named items to turn into the agents. Uh, the, the points of collection for those are dead space pockets uh, or, or, or complexes. A lot of the complexes have ship size restrictions. And so if you have a battle cruiser, you're not necessarily going to be permitted to use the, uh, to use the acceleration gate. Uh, and so you're stuck in a frigate or a destroyer. If, uh, if you can fly an assault frigate, that will fit through the through the smaller gates, and you'll have a much quicker, a much a much quicker gathering of the materials and a, and a more fun time. Aisha asks if it if it's worth it to buy the tags. For, uh, asks if it's uh, worth it to buy the tags for the standing increase or awards, and that depends. For a lot of people, uh, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, I've uh, I've typically bought my tags to turn in for the Cosmos missions. Uh, they are expensive. Uh, Azolas asks if I have a link handy for the Galenti or Minmatar Cosmos missions. Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I don't. I, I keep meaning to get some uh, specifically, but uh, the, you'll, you'll see a lot of uh, results come up in Google or the search engine of your choice. Frank asks if any of us want to make 24 jumps to help with can flippers. Sorry, Frank. Uh, Ariba asks, how do you get epic missions? Uh, I'll, I'll defer that to somebody more knowledgeable. Uh, to locate missions in general, I'm a fan of eveagents.com, even though some people suggest that it's out of date. At the bottom of the page, it indicates the current data dump, um, so eventually it will get caught up. I don't know if that's going to include uh, the epic missions. I'm going to guess that Today, uh, it's still not there. I uh, said so sometimes uh, it, it it depends on uh, on market conditions. Um, they may be as much as ten million dollar or ten million isks uh, per tag, and you often need ten or twenty tags. That's on the on the high end. Uh, ironically, the lower level 
cosmo, uh, sorry, the lower level data center missions uh, have, often have the most expensive tags uh, because it's what everybody wants to run first, and it's typically the uh, only missions that are available to them until they uh, increase their standings. Once you get to the to the higher level data center missions, the tags do become cheaper. You can all do a price check on a Greistus copper tag in, in, the, in the region that you're at and get a good idea uh, what 10 of those cost. Uh, here in the forge, 10 of those would end up costing uh, me, uh, looks like uh, close to 5, uh, five million esque. When it comes to grinding uh, standings, it really depends on your capabilities and the capabilities of uh, of your ship. Uh, one of my one of my uh, other uh, tunes uh, can uh, fly an assault frigate pretty well, and uh, an assault frigate to 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 burn through to grind through level ones is uh, is fun because it's uh, almost instantly takes out uh, everybody that needs to take out to grind the missions. Um, in, in, in that case, I think that the level ones are, are faster standings increases versus the level two. On the other hand, uh, my character right now uh, is burning through level twos in order to get standings increases, uh, mostly because I don't want to invest in all of the... Uh, fighting skills that I need to get on to level 3s and level 4s. Uh, I'm trying to do engineering and marketing, and uh, and so for my, in this particular circumstance for me, I'm getting the most uh, the most increase for my time by running the level 2s in a, in a cruiser. The, the question that I was answering for the, for the benefit of the audio is uh, if one really wanted to grind uh, standings for a faction or a corporation, are you better off just sticking with the level one missions or not? What you can also do is train up connections to level two, uh, for level three, and then uh, it should give you automatically pretty much access to any level two agent, unless they have a too high uh, uh, rating. But it should give you uh, basically out of the box access to, to level two missions if you have connections up to level three. Another question is asked, is there a recommended order or method for balancing missions for the four major factions, such as doing 32 Caldari, then 32 Gulenti, then 32 Mini, then 32 Amar? Um, I, I don't know. I've actually never sat down and yes. worked out all yes. of that math on paper. Yeah, there is. I don't know what the order is exactly, but um, it basically boils down to if you take on the storyline missions, your affection decreases for the others, and that, in, in a certain way, you can make sure that the affection decreases are as minimal as possible. If you want to avoid the affection decrease in general, just don't take storyline missions. My alts have only basically been saying no thanks to storyline. So uh, it might be a hell of a lot slower, but yeah, it doesn't give you minuses. It might be handy for trader alts. I think what he's looking for, though, is uh, to uh, accept the storyline missions so that he can get the faction increase. Yeah, there is, yeah, but there, what, what ratio? What ratio can he then go and do the other missions so that his standings don't become too low? I don't know exactly what the what the ratio. Uh, there is a, a, a there is like do this first, do that then. And there is like like a guide for that, but I don't know it exactly. Uh, you might want to poke uh, one of the LLS. They often run missions, and uh, you might want to look online on Google because there is a guide for it. That that thing I'm sure of. I think I'll, I'll look that up myself and uh, see if I can have it handy uh, for the uh, next time I do this class. Um, if you look at those charts that I that I posted earlier, that'll give you a good idea of what the the hits are. You may be able. I'm just making a conjecture here. You may be able to do just uh, the two enemy factions uh, and count on the derived standings to uh, to take care of the other two for you. Well, if there are uh, no more comments or questions, I'll, uh, I'll dismiss the class. In the meantime, if, uh, if uh, 
something occurs to you, please feel free to uh, convo me if uh, if uh, if I'm in the game. If I if I reject the invitation, it means I'm trying not to die. Uh, likewise, feel free to send an email in game, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So last chance comms are open. Uh, text chat is open. If uh, if I hear nothing, I'm going to close out. Uh, before you go, one question. Uh, yes, I noticed during one of the war ops that we had that when our some of our spaceships went to Galente space, one of the members of our corporation got shot to heck by the Galente military. Is there any way you could run missions to prevent that from happening to you? Yeah. That's basically yeah. the big trait of, uh, of balancing everything out. That's, that's basically the big trick to mission running. Trying to balance out everything so you won't get shot at. Keep your eye on, uh, on uh, the other negative standings. If any of them get to negative five or below, you are in danger from uh, that exact circumstance whenever you go into their space. However, the funny part of it is, um, if I, let's say I got minus 10 to Galante, and another guy got minus uh, 5 to Galante, uh, if we both start doing the exact same missions and killing the exact same rats, I, with my minus 10, will get positive with Galante faster than the other guy with minus 5, because it's a percentage increase. Also, another minor trick that, I don't know if it's been discussed here, this is actually a true trick. There's uh, only a faction, of, there's only standing change once every 15 minutes. It just takes then the highest rep that you killed and uh, changes your standings according to, accordingly. How you can force standing change is basically change session. Kill a rat, dug up, or jump to another system, and you got your standing increase. That way you can actually grind that shit out real fast. It's not an exploit, it's just using game mechanics to its fullest. So for example, I kill a rat, I go uh, jump, jump over to another system, kill a rat there, then jump back, and just keep doing that to get standing increases non-stop. From every rat that I kill, I get a standing increase then. That also works for your security status, if, uh, if that's a concern for some of you. Yeah, that works for all standings, basically, all types of standings that you get from that particular red. If it's like plus one for, for, uh, for uh, Galante and minus one uh, for Caldera, it will be plus one for Galante and minus one for Caldera if you change section. That's why, yeah. Also, another way to avoid the whole um, look at this Galante shooting at me, um, don't take on missions which involve shooting any of the other factions in game, except pirates, of course. So if you, as a Caldari, need to shoot uh, Galante, don't take the mission. Would you say that a shooting Mordu's Legion is okay, or is that another one I should try to avoid not putting holes through? You should look uh, who's who, who's, uh, what, what standing uh, changes. Like if you go, uh, for example, shoot Caldari, a uh, Minotaur even starts, if uh, Galante, a uh, Minotaur starts hitting you slowly. Uh, while Galente starts saving you fast. Essentially, everybody belongs to one faction or another. If you kill something, uh, somebody is not going to like you for it. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, you're talking uh, Nolsec, uh, pirate, faction space only. It may not be a concern to you. However, there's four races that are concerned to you. Amar, Mimitar, Galente, and Kildare. Don't take missions that involve killing any of them. You'll get standing hit so bad, you eventually get basically banned from the other side of space. Yeah, so earlier we discussed the means of uh, balancing those a little bit, because you're, the, the negative standing is never as, uh, as big as the positive standing. And so, yeah, if, uh, if, uh, if you're really trying to increase your faction standings, Sometimes you'll want to take uh, you'll want to take that storyline mission and, and then just make up for it with the other faction later. As long as you don't go too negative. One question then: um, Say I'm doing 
primarily Galente missions, but I want to do some Kadari missions. If I'm doing level 4 Galente missions, does that mean I have to slowly work myself up on the Kaldari side to be able to do level 4 Kaldari? Or would level uh, yep. 1 Kaldari allow me to bring my standings up the most so I wouldn't be shoot on sight? Well, basically, what there, there's time, if you do level 4, you get a standing increase faster, of course. But if you're going for true true standing increase, perfection increase, kill a rat, jump, to a, jump through a gate, kill a rat there, jump back through a gate, uh, kill a rat then, etc., etc., etc. Each time when you kill something, session change, and then you can actually grind out a full point of, of standing in a day. Would the Cosmos mission also be a good way to bring that standing up? Mm, yeah, but there's a problem with Cosmos. Cosmos missions you can only do once. If you screw over a Cosmos mission, you can't repeat it. Oh, yeah, uh, we, we will have a Cosmos class in, uh, in two weeks to, to cover that. Um, essentially, for a Cosmos class, you don't even want to talk to the agent until you've already gathered the goods that, uh, that you're going to turn in. Uh, go, go ahead with your question. Yeah, indeed. Right. Like, Cosmos, to unlock the super sh stuff in Cosmos, you have to have certain goods on you, on your ship. If you don't have them, Cosmos is not worth it. The, the thing about, for the clarification of the rat killing and getting faction standings, uh, that comes from uh, negative derived factions from the rat. Is that right? Uh, that is, what's, uh, what is the uh, faction increased based on when you kill a rat? Is it based on the uh, derived increase? It's a percentage increase. Therefore, if your number is extremely low, if you have, or if you have a high number in positive or the negative, since it's a percentage increase, it's going to be a huge increase or decrease. The closer you have your number of perfection standing or, or standings to zero or security to zero, the harder it is to change. Uh, that's not really what I mean. What I mean is, for example, Blood Raider. Let's see here. Uh, they're disliked by Amar and Kaldari, I think. Right. So we'll killing them give you um, faction with Amar and Kaldari, but not with Galente and Minmatar? Indeed. It will make uh, one of the pirate corps really hate you. It will make one of the player uh, factions uh, really love you and the other one love you a little bit less fast. If you go over, like, for example, here in uh, Kaldari, there's Garissas. If I start killing Garissas, then Kaldari will love me a lot. Well, my Amar love will go a little bit slower. If I go over to Mars space, kill the reds there, Amar love a lot, Kaldari love slower. Yeah, I, I, I reposted that link. I don't think you were here earlier. It explains all of the uh, the uh, the relationships for the drive factions, as as which pretty much describes exactly. Um, you know, the 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 uh, Galanti will love you a lot, and then the Minmatire will love you, but just not quite as much. For, for example, like everything is tied into everything. That's the nice thing about Eve. So it's not not along the lines of World of Warcraft where you just go over to a random faction in Booty Bay and just choose choose at random and everything will work out. Now in EVE you can really screw yourself over if you choose the wrong faction to root for. Okay guys, uh, one more last chance. If, uh, if there's nothing else, we'll call it a night. Okay, I want to thank everyone uh, for your participation. Uh, good luck out there. A smart thing to do now is like take your knowledge that you just learned and apply it like, go out with, them with a bunch of guys and run some missions. Oh, yeah, and a comment, uh, if uh, others didn't see it earlier, I found that as a Galente, I did a few missions killing Kaldari when I started out and uh, promptly stopped when I realized what a mistake I was making. And uh, I found the EU missions channel. Uh, if you guys don't know what it is, it's uh, basically a fleet that shares standing rewards for uh, corporation missions. And... Um, you can, uh, for example, if you're, uh, if you're a Galente, your Kaldari is still above minus two, but it's negative, so you can't normally get missions. You join EU missions, you do missions uh, for uh, Galente or whatever. You have to do missions while you're in the fleet, and you can get um, um, missions from other people in the fleet 
uh, rewards, for example, Kaldari Navy. So uh, once that's positive, you can go to uh, Kaldari Space and do missions for the Navy. Okay, that's, that's a good tip. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll add that to my next call. Thank you. Just uh, make sure you read the rules for the uh, EU missions channel so you don't get banned. Basically, you just have to run missions, and it doesn't matter what level it is. You just have to contribute to the pool. Yeah, it's 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 an awesome trick that that uh, that's, that you do. It's basically you can turn either a mission in for yourself or for the entire group. If you do it with a large group, that all run mission for themselves and just pass on the uh, the, the standings to the to the gang. You can get standings so fast. It's amazing. Okay, guys, one last thank you. I am going to uh, drop connection right now. I'll see some of you later. Thanks a lot, and uh, have fun out there.